these guys, you guys are from the, the Zeitgeist movement here in Vancouver. We kind of uh, team up with you guys and do events. We're at a lot of the same activism events and stuff. And you guys have tickets to some of the events that you're doing or some some think gig that you guys have going on, right? Yeah. So come yeah. on and talk about that. All right. Uh, you want to just ask us questions about it from over there? Or? Sure, yeah. Or, yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll feed you guys some questions. Cool. And I don't know, you guys want a bong rip? Are you guys puffers? <laughs> um, we are, but I, I think I'm do. good right now. All right, okay. You, you want to hit the bong? This is some um, crazy, it's got some nice butter in it. Maybe, like, as I'm getting off. Okay, that might be yeah. <laughs> advisable. All right. So, yeah, so tell us about the Zyke. First of all, tell us, yeah, the Zeitgeist movement, what it's about, and what you guys do here in Vancouver, and then tell us about what your gig is. Cool. Right, well, the Zeitgeist movement, for anyone who doesn't know, is a worldwide activist organization that basically promotes um, how to make a sustainable world and what it actually means to have a sustainable society and economic system. And right, and the approach we kind of take is instead of looking at things uh, through the old model or the model that we have now, which is largely a political and an economic uh, standpoint, which is how do we make a profit out of whatever we're doing? Um, also, doing away with like old concepts of like religion and uh, just taking a, a direct technical look and using what we know scientifically as to what we can apply to problem solving. You know, and and every problem. Yeah, like when 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 you want to design a plane, you don't ask a bunch of politicians for their opinions on how to design a plane. So when you want to feed everybody on the planet, it's not about people's opinions and arguing. You just need you need engineers, someone who knows how to do it, to design a distribution system that gets the food out there to the people. Right. And so you guys would advise, for instance, using hemp or things like that. You guys... Definitely. Of course, yeah, Wh right. Wherever it is the most efficient and way to use anything for a medicine or for fibers or everything else that hemp is useful for, it, you, it should be used. Right. The whole hemp and, uh, you know, marijuana, you know, war is, is a perfect example of uh, an inefficiency that is inherent in the system. Uh, we, we take this plant that is you know valuable across the board for clothing, uh, you know paper, medicine. Um, yeah, I mean you can just do so much oil, food. We can do everything with this plant, and because it's it stands as a threat to certain corporate interests, uh, a valuable uh, material is kept from the world, and it's this kind of backwards thinking that, and you can find that in every aspect of, of what the world that we live in. Like we don't have the best foods we possibly could have. We don't have the best shelters, insurance system, medicines, medicines. All of these things could be improved if there weren't uh, corporate uh, financial uh, interests. And we're not saying that you know money is evil or or inherently wrong, but we're just looking at the world as uh, you know what's possible and what's efficient and what works. And we're saying if you look around, it's not hard to see that this system is not working it's just yeah right exactly cool and so you guys um, are always here in Vancouver at the events doing the activist work and getting the message out there what's this latest gig that you guys are doing yeah well we, we set up our booth every Saturday at the Vancouver Art Gallery and then whenever there's an event like um, Baby Day or um, the 420 Festival we'll always set up there and talk to people and uh, so this weekend is Zeitgeist Day, Z Day. It's a yearly event that happens. Um, all the chapters around the world will put on an event. And this year, the main uh, the main event is here in Vancouver. Peter Joseph, the director of the Zeitgeist film series, is uh, in town, and he's giving a lecture and doing a screening. And uh, the lecture is tomorrow, and we have ten tickets here to give away for that. And that's going to be down at the Vogue. And there's uh, there's other speakers too. Um, people from around the world in the movement. I'm going to be doing a talk. There's uh, six talks altogether. Very cool. And so you have 10 tickets to give away right now on right. the Right. Just uh, oh, sign in on the chat and uh, give what what exactly to what event are, are those tickets good for? Like, they are they're good for day? tomorrow at the Vogue Theater. Doors at 11. The event is at 12 and it's the lecture event. Okay, so this is for the lecture tomorrow at, at yeah. 12. Okay. Right. right. And where is the location again? The Vogue Theater Vogue in Granville. Theater. Cool. Awesome. So, yeah, I don't know how we're going to work that out. What, you guys had some scheme that you were doing in the chat or something? I think yeah, he said he's just going to ask people in the chat and to email in or... What, yeah, anybody who's that? from Vancouver, basically. I don't know who on the show. It's, we probably have some Vancouverites watching. So, yeah, if people want, they can just send it to my email address, Jeremiah at Canvas Culture, and the first ten people who send emails, we'll give them to them. Okay. And then we can just check it after the show and we'll, we can even... Actually, have them send it to CC Nebula. Or actually, no, no. 
Uh, send them to Marius at Cannabis Culture. I already have the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Marius at Cannabis Culture. Email him and yeah, yeah. get Spell free tickets. M A R I U S hey, at Cannabis Culture. Ready here. Engine, I'll put all that butter in this. Or room. just check out. Oh, nice. There we go. <laughs> Big butter joint. <clears throat> Vancouver.org is it? Uh, yeah. I don't know, org or com. Oh, dot com. Dot com, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And so you mentioned the Zeitgeist there. film series, which yes. is a popular thing. Uh, it's one of the internet's most watched movies. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I actually am a fan of the first one, mm -hmm. definitely. I am a 9-11 truther, and there's some 9-11 right. truth yeah. stuff in there. Um, there's also this global bankers theory. And, of course, there's the first part about religion, which is very interesting to me as well. And, yeah. Yeah. and the sort of astrological foundations of Christianity. Right. Uh, I found that quite fascinating too. Uh, the other ones, I only, I don't think I've really even seen both of them all the way through, sadly. All right. oh, yeah, uh, but maybe explain to people uh, what the Zeitgeist film series are about. Okay, well the first one you kind of went over, um, and that was um, the, the first movie. It was uh, over 100 million views on the upload on Google video. And um, the movement actually started after the second movie, which um, is about it's about two things. It's about the monetary system and how it affects our um, everything, a society, poverty, politics, and um, what, what to do about it, which is a resource-based economy. It presents the Venus Project, which is uh, the work of Jock Fresco, and he has um, he devised a system called the resource-based economy, which um, is what we promote. And what's the third movie about? The third movie expands on the train of thought of the second movie. It um, brings in a lot more experts and um, doctors and this kind of thing. It talks about um, human behavior and then again with m monetary market policies from a bit of a different angle and then a resource-based economy. Right, it takes a more holistic look at what's going on. I think it addresses a really important question, uh, something that we, we come across a lot when we try to uh, spread these ideas is the uh, human nature argument is that um, you know, we're trying to see what the world would be like without so much competition, and people like tend to believe that that's an ingrained trait that we're just naturally these like competitive, self-serving you know entities. But really, we're uh, not sure how much of that is produced by the environment versus you know what they call human nature. Mm -hmm. um, and that it goes into that a lot, and it's really just fascinating to just kind of break apart the human mind because uh, you start to see that the environment that we all live in uh, is not separate from us; that we're totally affected by it, uh, like 100 percent of well, the time. Well, how about the organization of government itself, though? Are you talking about like a socialistic type of system where we have a, like federated government that overlooks a large period of land? Using a, a term like socialist is is uh, I, I mean, it, it harkens back to certain ideas that. Maybe, uh, like maybe things that you would say, oh, this resembles something that might be socialist, but uh, I, like, I don't think it's fair or really honest to look at something that can emerge at this time in human history with a word that was invented a hundred years ago. There are things that are uh, applicable now that that word especially gets muddied you know, through all kinds of different things. Definitely, yeah, yeah. So, huh? But on the, I mean, if we were to look at, say, like a Nolan chart, you know, of of authoritarian versus um, egalitarian and you know where you and I, life I, I guess well the thing is um, all like socialism it's you're just thinking more or less government control really and you don't yeah. really think of how the government works and we don't really agree with the whole idea of politics like I was talking before with um, politicians will just throw their opinions around and people will vote for whoever's opinion they like best right. but um, one of the taglines we have is science applied to society or using the scientific method for social concern and in science you base your decisions upon repeatable results not based on the opinions of politicians so government wouldn't really work in the same way it would be engineers it would be scientists it would be people willing to do the research and actually figure out what they're talking about rather than this person with a personality is going out so and saying... So this is the no, no, no. current political system entirely. Right, right. Yeah. in other words, like, when we... Okay, the, the concept of authority would be... Right now, when you when I say authority, you might think, oh, like, a police officer or, like, you know, this this parent figure or some someone that has, like... But what we're, the authority that we're trying to look towards would be, like, the authority of your doctor or your car mechanic. Someone who has... Uh, expertise in something and can actually get something done, you actually want their authority. You would follow their authority because you trust what they know, rather than a politician 
whose authority you, you have to you have to take. We're talking about going to the authority of the experts because they know what works. Wow, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to find out more. I really don't honestly know deeply about the movement or anything like that, but we've uh, hung out with you guys a lot at rallies and stuff, and you guys are pretty cool, so it's <laughs> nice to have you on the show. Um, so yeah, about the whole ticket thing, I guess, again, we should give away that address. Did Marius, do you want to throw that back up there again? Yeah, no worries. It's questions everyone in society should ask. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think that's great what, that you guys are doing that. Definitely. Yeah. Whether you agree with us or not, it's definitely good to be thinking and asking. Definitely. Yeah. Conversation yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah. Rather than just be a lemming and just wonder yeah. nothing. You know? You really yeah. gotta yeah. wonder yeah. Just going through how the system is. Yeah. Yeah. Are, we Yay. are we shooting? Are we rolling? <laughs> we are. <laughs> and actually, David, you're up next. Yeah. So cool, guys. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Thank we'll give away those tickets to anybody who sends in to that. Thanks a lot, guys. Much yes, appreciated. Sure. Thank you. For and so, David, 